Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about things I would do differently if I was to learn how to code all over again. As someone who's been coding professionally for about three and a half years and I learned code about four and a half, five years ago, I definitely have learned and identified things that I would do differently if I was to do it all over again. And I hope by sharing some of my past experiences and also to seeing upcoming developers uh, and seeing the mistakes they're making, I hope by sharing things I would do differently that it will help you with your coding journey. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. And as always, shout out to some of these awesome subscribers. Thank you, I am, I just love the community we are building on YouTube. Out of all my social media platforms, YouTube is definitely my favorite community, but don't say anything. Um, and yeah, so thank you for all your wonderful feedback and comments. I always take them to heart and try and make my content around it. Okay, let's get right into it. There are so many things that I wish I would have done differently when I was first learning how to code. Looking back, I can you know think of so many things that would have saved me so much time, so much headaches, and really just prevented me from having a lot of breakdowns uh, because learning how to code is definitely not a easy thing to do. It can be extremely overwhelming and especially when you are looking for a job, it can be very uh, time sensitive that you want to learn how to code and become a good coder as quickly as possible. So the things I will share with you today will help you get there. The first thing I would do differently is treat errors as opportunities instead of freaking out. And what I mean by this is when you're first starting learning how to code and kind of getting into it, more often than not, you're going to have these moments of freakouts due to errors in your code. It can become especially frustrating when you are self-teaching yourself and you don't have necessarily a mentor or teacher to go to and say, hey, these are the errors I'm getting, how do I handle them? And what I used to do when I was first learning how to code was when I got these errors, I would freak out. I would lose so much time just by having a poor attitude of being like, this is dumb. I'm never going to get this. What's the point? Close my laptop and storm off. It was a little bit into my coding journey. Someone said to me, well, you know, you're meant to break things, break things because that's how you learn. And when I kind of clicked for whatever reason up until that point, even though I was just developing in my local environment, there was something stopping me from uh, feeling comfortable with breaking things and then also to being comfortable with investigating the errors. I thought I would break things and that for whatever reason they wouldn't be able to get fixed or resolved um, if I solved the problems in the wrong way and even talking aloud about it, it doesn't make sense. But I definitely think this is a very common fear for people who are just starting out in their coding journey. They're scared to break things, what will happen? and um, don't really wanna mess anything up. When in reality, it's just your local environment. It's good to mess things up. And that is the best way to learn is by breaking things. What I actually used to do as a side note is when I was learning how to code and got past a certain point and I would take a tutorial, and this is what I still do. If there's part of it that I didn't understand how we got there, like I didn't fully understand, I'll actually, or even in my day-to-day, -day, my job, if there's some code I'm working on or a bug I'm solving and I'm like, okay, I don't really understand why this part, like where this API is coming from or where this button is calling this function or whatever the case may be. What I'll start doing is trying to comment out a bunch of stuff to understand, okay, well, let's just break it. Cause then at least I know where, what line of code is getting it to work. And then I can kind of reverse engineer it. And that really helps me if I break this, and comment out the slide of code and it stops it from working, logically, when I comment back in, it will start working. And that means that line of code is what, what I'm looking for. And I don't know if that's just me going in a circle around comments right now, but it really helps me with my thought process and uh, not being afraid to break things. So go break things. The next thing I wish I did more of when I was starting to learn how to code is use custom names for variables and classes. I used to think it was so cool to be let X equal and then whatever it is or const X, Y, Z and like make all these obscure names for different things I'm doing only to have no idea or concept as to what they're doing when I look back on my code. And now even in my day-to-day -day work and if I'm making any side projects, I always ensure to name the const or classes or anything 
properly to the point that if someone else was to come into my code, they too would understand what it was doing. So out with the super cool, obscure kind of naming and in with the very clear to the point, what is going on? The next thing I would do differently, and I've spoke about this in some other videos is take time and read the documentation. And I know it sounds so obvious. And if you are someone who's doing that, kudos to you because I was someone who was almost anti-documentation. I no idea why, no reasons, but I would always take so many tutorials, so many, you know, Udemy courses, YouTube tutorials, and those would be hours on end. But the thought of taking 10 or 20 minutes to simply read the documentation, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't know why that was. I think it was because it seemed very overwhelming to me or intimidating. Good documentation a lot of times is very in-depth and thorough and that can be very overwhelming for someone who's just starting out. So in turn, I would avoid it. However, I can tell you firsthand, the answers are typically, I'm not gonna say always, but typically in good documentation, they are there. And you will find out there, even today with uh, work I do, I'll sometimes ask a senior developer something and they'll be like, you know, tip, tip. did you look in the documentation? I'm like, oh crap, I didn't. And it's right there. So make sure to read the documentation before you do anything. And I can't stress this enough. I, I've had too many late nights or headaches caused just because I didn't simply take the time to read the documentation. The next thing I would do differently is to actually pay attention into learning in depth how to use Git. This is something when I was first starting to learn how to code, there was so much to learn. So naturally you can't learn everything, but one of the things I wish I would have done is take more time to really understand Git. It was way too late in my career actually when I was hired as a developer that I started really learning how to use Git. And I'm sure looking back, some of the questions I asked at my first job uh, as a developer around Git, they were like, are we sure we hired the right person? Like knew nothing about it. Uh, or very little I should say and um, it was a big learning curve for me because I waited so long in my coding journey to learn how to use it. Git is so important and whether you're freelancing or working for a company it's something that you will use or you really should use and it's equally as important in my opinion as learning the code itself. The next thing I want to bring up is to know your terminal. Uh, and what I mean by this is a lot of times when we are starting to learn how to code, a lot of us will just rely on source tree or Git Kraken or what are some other ones? Um, different things like that where you can actually, and that's great in a sense because you can see what's going on, you can see what branch you are, it's more of a visual kind of thing, but in reality you need to get comfortable with your terminal or you really should. And listen, I use source tree for some time, for some kind of things pretty much throughout the week, but on a daily basis, being able to rely strictly on my terminal is so much better. And there are some things I find that if I try to get one of these platforms to do for me, they don't do it in the specific way I wanted and I need to rely on my terminal anyways. I've had too many developers come to me and be like, hey, this isn't working or I pulled from the latest branch on development and it's, you know, I'm using source tree, but it's not updating. I'm like, just use the terminal because it will update then. And just different things like that. Um, there's there's sometimes issues. So get comfortable with your terminal. It's not this big scary thing like you see in the movies where it's hackers late at night. It can be your friend, I promise you. The next thing I wish I knew when I was learning how to code or things I would do differently is have more fun with it. I was so hard on myself and really just thought that I needed to, I had such a strict timeline and I just put all this pressure on myself and Yes, of course, I understand that you have to do that, but this is supposed to be fun. You know, even if you're doing it for your job, you want to have some fun. You want to enjoy it at least a little bit, um, hopefully a lot, but like take it down a notch with the pressure you put on yourself and the stress you put on yourself to have it all figured out right away. You will get it. It will come to you. I'm speaking firsthand as someone who knew nothing about tech or coding, only about six years ago or five years ago, I started exploring it. And now I'm working at a huge tech company as a software developer and technical consultant. I can tell you it will happen for you as long as you be patient. It's not going to happen overnight. Kind of to that point, I remember when I was in my boot camp, there were some students that were having these expectations that right after the boot camp, they would find their dream job or they wouldn't even consider doing a startup or 
these weird things. And because they had all these unrealistic expectations, it's one thing to have goals and dreams and it's other another thing to be very skewed in your perception of your abilities currently. You can always, you know, set the bar high and work towards that, but don't have your expectations that if you don't get a job at that level, you're just gonna quit. And there were so many people that I went to the boot camp with that ended up, they're not programming today because they had those unrealistic expectations. Their ego was through the roof and now they're not even coding because they just had too much of an ego. So remove your ego from your learning journey and um, just jump right in, have some fun. Also, something that I did do, so something that I wouldn't do differently, but don't be afraid to ask questions. That's how you learn. And you know, it was a few weeks ago, I asked a senior developer at work a question. I said, oh, I can't wait till I can stop asking so many questions. Cause it was a day that I had a ton of questions. And her response was, hopefully that day never comes because when that day comes, that means you're not learning anymore. So ask as many questions as you want. Uh, that's how you learn and grow. And it shows that you're really interested in what you are learning. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found some of these insights valuable for your learning and coding journey. You will get there, I promise you, and I will help you along the way. Leave in the comments other questions you have or comments and um, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding content. I'll see you all soon.